Millie. Millie. Happy New Year, Millie. Miss you. Happy New Year. Oh. She's over it. Right. Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. <laughs> Sorry, Millie's making me laugh. It is the 1st of January, a new year, very exciting, and the start of a new reading blog. Oh, look at her, she's so cute. She didn't enjoy last night very much fireworks and rowdy family. Anyway, I haven't picked my first book yet. It's quite late already, I think it's about half 11. We're gonna have brunch, then go to the beach. I should say that my mum, my stepdad, my little brother, his girlfriend and my little sister are here. And then we're having Christmas dinner too later. Although let's call it a really fancy Sunday roast because I feel like Christmas in a new year is wrong. So that's that. And as always, I will take you along with me. I'm so excited about 2023. I love a new year. Love it. Let's get cracking. Oh, more? Oh, that looks like an absolute concoction, Louise. Oh, they look beautiful. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Happy, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Hey everyone and happy Tuesday, although it's a little bit of a sad Tuesday for me as my family are all departing today. My brother and his girlfriend are off to Sheffield and then after we go to a wonderful big old stately home, one of my favourites, mum and my stepdad and my little sister are off on their merry way so they'll have work tomorrow. Anyway, I have started The Bluest Eye by Tony Morrison. Now what I've decided to do is to make a vlog all about my superstitions and, well, my superstitions about the first book that I read every year, how I get on with this, because I think it's gonna be probably quite a short, sharp read, and what that means for my reading year ahead for a separate vlog, which will be my first vlog of 2023. So this one will be my second. And also the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't want to, to I want to film by whim and I want to make content more by whim. And that might mean that sometimes a reading vlog is one book, it might be five, it might last a day, it might last a week, it might last two, who knows? I do know I've got some travel plan that will go generally roughly from like Thursday to Tuesday, uh, to Monday, sorry, so that might be part of what's going on with my brain with that, because I would like them to be sort of their own thing. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm trying not to make any rules or be prescriptive this year. Speaking of that, mum and I are going to be filming our plans and intentions video shortly, so we need to get changed. And indeed, we will be um, filming our picking of the prompts, which will be the savage prompts for 2023, which hopefully lots of you will join in with, lots of you suggested them, so we'll see which ones we pick. Um, but before I do all of that, I just want to mention something that's quite random, is that I have unintentionally started multi-reading, and that is because, like with last year, I'm spending a year with Clemency Burton Hill with another Year of Wonder. I read and listened to Year of Wonder last year and loved it. Basically every day, Clancy introduced you to a piece of classical music in this most delightful, enthusy, enthusy, enthused and enthusiastic way. She's so knowledgeable, but never, it doesn't ever come across as academic. It's, it's very much how she emotionally responds as well as the history of some of the pieces and all those things. And I found so many pieces of great classical music last year. I loved it. I am on about whether I'll do that one as well as this one, but I started this one yesterday. Back was first, which is Clements's favorite. I have realized I'm definitely more of a strings and piano than a big old trumpets guy. And who knew that that would be something I would be saying. And then today, it was, let me get to it, Robert Schumann, who I hadn't heard before, and I liked it. It was a quiet, tiny piece of, mm, that. I don't know the technical term, but yeah, it, it was sort of a small piece that was filled with a lot, if you know what I mean. I don't know whether I'll, I'm not gonna tell you about these daily. I might sort of have a weekly catch up or is it something that you'd rather I just talked about at the end of the year once I've gotten with it? Let me know in the comments down below. 
And the other thing that I started accidentally <laughs> was Hold Your Fire by Chloe Wilson, which is a short story collection. And I picked up because I was thinking, oh, I would like to head to a short story collection or have, I picked up because I was thinking, I would like to have a short story collection on the go of Grace, you know. I picked it up because I was thinking I would really like to have a short story collection on the go and I'll try the writing. And the first story, which is The Leopard Next Door, is literally not very long at all, it's that and that. So then I was like, well, I'm in. And I think this is gonna be short stories of the sort of, well, the, sto the short story collection that I love most in the entire world is The Redemption of Galen Pike by Karis Davies. And I love that because some of them are so short and condensed, but utter magical miracles of mini fiction. And that's how I felt about the first one in here. And I flicked through and I think there are some that are like a paragraph. And so yeah, I thought this would be a fun one. I've also been meaning to read this for ages. It's Australian fiction. I love that. And so that's going to be another book that I'll be reading. Now what I will do is report when I finished a short story collection. I'm not planning on like catching up with you on every story. That would be excessive. I mean, these vlogs went on forever, which they probably will anyway, because I'm planning on them being a bit more chatty this year and I can chat for England. So there we go. That's my catch up with you. Really looking forward to heading to more of this, but you'll see that in a different vlog. i be heading to that after we've been to Erdig, which I will put a snippet in of after this, um, because you don't want to be seeing the same thing over and over, do you? Let's be honest. What you will be seeing over and over probably is the three different tracksuits that I've got, where the bottoms match the tops, oi, oi. and um, I've got really into loungewear over the last few weeks. You'll also probably hear the tumble dryer going quite a lot in these videos, because when you've had lots of people to stay, there's invariably loads of washing, plus didn't do much over the Christmas break, so I wanna get all of that sorted. Now it's a new year, nice and new and fresh and new. New, 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 new. I've talked for too long already, I'm going to go now. I will catch up with you when I catch up with you. Also, I realise we've never library? filmed here. No. With the cheeky bum behind us. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no, I nearly ended it. It's you not my did. How rude. <laughs> Mildred sitting on my knee is unheard of, but it's happening. All my cold books ready for delivery to the library. Once Chris is home, because I can't physically carry those and um, don't have a car or a horse and cart. So that doesn't bread. Please. We won't tell the soul, lady. Yeah. I promise, okay? No. Did you say no? I said no, yes. Okay. Wow. Hi everyone, it is now Friday and I have not filmed for a few days as I had a really bad Durkham's flare after we had a big sort out of the house. We're in here because the library is such a tip, but that's gonna be sorted because tomorrow I'm gonna to go to Ikea and get some bits and bobs and give it like the move around that I've been wanting to for ages. And now I have to get some knickknacks and things and just have it looking a little bit fresh and ready for 2023, which I'm beginning to feel like I am now after a few days of feeling bleh. During that time though, I did finish The Bluest Eye, but as I'm making a separate vlog about that, which will have gone live by the time this one goes live, and I'll link it down below if you've missed it, because, Spoiler, I bloody loved this. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and I'm now desperate to read everything by Toni Morrison. I had read Home before, but at the wrong time in kind of my reading life, I think. I don't think I was quite ready for it yet. I've also read Content Warning Everything by Akweke Emeze, who is one of my absolute favourite writers and I have read their literary fiction, their romance novel, I've read their young adult fiction and now their poetry and the love just keeps growing. I thought this was phenomenal. It looks at so many things. It's 
it seems to be quite autobiographical, partly about how a Quake Amaze believes they are spirits. So there's kind of a spirit sentiment to a lot of what's going on. There's also nods to Igbo and the traditions of that culture. There's also religion here and oddly like found family with, uh, well, Mary, Mary Magdalene, Joseph, that's really interestingly done, as well as insights into relationships with family. And also this kind of constant theme of water is a real part of it. And this collection kind of has so many layers and from the surface, it's quite a still, quiet, it, admittedly angry in parts meditation on life. But as you go deeper, like the currents get darker and faster. And I just think it is, incredible. It's coming out in a different um, edition in the UK, which looks stunning. So I think I'm going to have to be a completist now. Both. But also I want to say thank you to Jenny uh, Womack, who got me this from my wishlist, which I normally get rid of, but I'm just going to keep it there. And if you want to go and have a look at it, you can. It's in my description box below. Um, I also read Hold Your Fire by Chloe Wilson. This is a short story collection that I've had on my shelves for ages. It's from Australia. And I got this because Jacqueline at Six Minutes For Me raved about it. And I was like, oh, that sounds like it's gonna be pretty cooking. I also really love the cover and I just think it is fantastic. I thought this was also absolutely incredible. My favourite short story collection of the year, just like this is my favourite poetry collection of the year because they're my first, but I think they will remain so. This is a real mixture of both realist short stories and also fantastical short stories. And some of them are particularly short short stories and others are much longer. The opening story was what kind of got me into it. And I talked about it, I think, before that I hadn't intended to start this necessarily, but I just thought, oh, I quite fancy it. I'll try, I'll have a flick through. And because the short story, first short story is only two pages, which is about a um, someone who has their, sorry, which is about someone whose neighbour gets a leopard. And it's only two pages long, but I was absolutely hooked. And so I followed on. And here we have stories about people who um, feed their plants with blood that they're stealing from a donation, blood donation centre that they work at. You've got people who are like obsessive about diving and the pain involved in diving. You've got couples who seem on the outside to be really happy but aren't really and what I've noticed as well with this collection is the themes that kind of flow through so you'll have someone who's purposefully uh, feeding their plants with blood and then you'll have later on there's a story about people who clean up after like car crashes or after animals have been hit by cars in the middle of Australia so like after a roo has been hit by a car and then that looks at like how the blood feeds the uh, plants at the curbside so you've got kind of this real yeah there's, there are themes that kind of come up and obsession is definitely one and the the last story has really stayed with me which is about um a woman who paint wants to paint other people but like not the perfect images the sort of dirtiness of them and yeah I just there's a brilliant one about a, a woman who ends up going and living in, the, in this house where she's looking after this child the mother is away the father's really busy and it kind of has this all of them have this kind of creepy undertone oh there's one about a, a couple who buy a house where people have been murdered because it's cheaper and then we follow on with how they then try to reposition themselves because they've managed to go sort of technically upper class because of buying this particular place that one I will say went on a little bit longer than I wanted and actually I would say the longer ones sometimes had less impact but I still really enjoyed them like this I wouldn't say this is five star like I think this was and I think this was so like that's a cooking start to the year but it was definitely like 4.5 it was just a couple of them I was like okay this is going on a bit now well, where are we going to get to but I love that every single one surprises you you don't get at the end what you expect at the beginning and that reminded me slightly of Karis Davis who I love so that's you caught up with what I've been reading, even though I've been absolutely rubbish at filming because I've been feeling rubbish. I wanted to mention what I am going to read. Well, not what I'm going to read next, but what I'm going to read after my next book. My next book is going to be something that I've got to read for work. And so I'm not going to film reading those books this year. I might talk about them a little bit later. Sometimes it might be books that I'm reading for events. Sometimes it might be books that I'm reading for, in this case, the... Um, 
Christopher Bland Prize for debut authors over 50, which I'm doing for the Royal Society of Literature. I don't think it's fair to talk about those books before we have a short list, so I'm not going to. But what I have asked is my patrons to pick as I am in pink today. I know it's Wednesdays we wear pink, but it's Fridays we wear pink. In fact, I like to wear pink quite a lot. Any given day of the week, I have asked my patrons to pick a pink book for me to read after I've read the next submission. Well, it's going to be the first of the prize submissions that I'm going to be reading actually, which is exciting. Anyway, I have chosen four books that they're going to vote for. The first of which is When We Lost Our Heads by Heather O'Neill, which I started last year, but didn't get around to finishing. I was really, really enjoying it. Just lots of stuff was going on and my brain wasn't quite in the right place but i really 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 want to get back to reading that one and i would say that's probably the one i most want them to pick but we'll see what they pick and um, i'm also really keen to get to the rabbit hutch by tess gunty it's one of the books that i wanted to read by the end of 2022 i didn't get around to it but you know it won the uh, waterstones prize for debut fiction I think it was on the National Book Awards. Yeah, it's been a it's been a book that's kind of had a really nice buzz about it. And it's set in a building where you get to know all the different people in all the different apartments. And I love that in fiction. I don't read that enough. And I'm tempted at some point to do a themed reading vlog on that if that one isn't picked, because I've got a few books like that actually. Then we have a bit of a random one, and I I kind of feel like this probably won't get the most votes. It might actually get the least votes because they won't necessarily have heard of it but that also makes me think do I flip the script flip, flip the switch flip the script whatever pick whatever book gets the least votes as opposed to which one gets the most I don't know anyway what is it it's Son of Sin by Omer Saka and this is about a young man who's I think struggling with his sexuality yeah a young queer Muslim trying to escape the past intrigued for that one I'll read these all at some point and then I think this might be the one that they vote for Night Crawling by Layla Motley which again I meant to read last year like I did The Rabbit Hutch didn't get around to it it was one that I was really really excited for I'm still super excited for it so I'll be delighted if any of these four books get picked well one of them will be I've been meant to read it so I think it's uh, in with a shot, but I thought that would be quite a fun thing to do every so often is pick like a series of books with different specific colours and get them to vote for those. Although the savage prompt for March is books with your favourite colour on. And I think purple is going to be that, but I've got a few ideas of books that are purple that I would like to read. Anyway, I've waffled on for ages now, but um, yeah, it's going to be one of these books next. Which one will it be? I will let you know once the voting has closed, which will either be just before we go to Ikea tomorrow or after. So I shall report back anon. There we are, an update of some books that I've read and some books or one book out of these which I'm gonna read. So, yeah. I was having a big stretch. Oh. I'm so pleased he's back. It's made my absolute year. Madness, it's madness, it's carpets. Sale starts Friday. Hi everyone, it's Saturday, not Friday. Oh. What? <laughs> I don't know why we were doing that. <laughs> it's because we had it in our heads. Um, we are on our way to Ikea for the fun and frolics of trying to find some... I mean, we're literally here now. ...floor lamps. Well, literally, that's why that I started we're filming on our now. Way, yeah? we're, we're literally nearly there. We're here for lamps, but let's not pretend I won't be looking at cac cacti... Cacti... <laughs> cacti... <laughs> and also... Getting my mouth around some meatballs! Wow! I feel like today, I don't know if this is a, uh, what, what's the word, a uh, style of fashion, but I feel a little bit like Saturday Dad out on the run, old Cardi trying to be cool t-shirt let me know your thoughts on that it's certainly got me some attention in ikea that's all i'm saying and that is what i am back for we're back from ikea and i thought i would do a little ikea haul i thought i'd get the two biggest things out of the way so at the moment i'm sort of trying to make the library more co 
cosy. I might have talked about this already, quite possibly. I do feel like I'm on repeat, on repeat quite a lot at the moment. I am trying to make the library cosy because I want to use it a lot more than I have in the last year and have it much more as a, yes, place for filming, but also like space that I just go and sit and chill and read a lot more. And because I either end up reading in bed, the bath or the lounge and sort of what's the whole point of having that room if I'm not using it masses apart from to film. So a big part of that is these two big boxes, which have got, well, you can see one there, I feel like this is like Krypton factor or something lamps in because one of the things that I don't tend to like about the library is the overhead lighting which I've had to film under before and I don't even like to think of that. This is not filming lighting clearly but it's sort of more cosy corner lighting and the reason I've gone for these lamps because I was thinking of going for something a little bit more bougie maybe or even actually modern is I can't deny my love for granny chic and these feel a bit granny, but like a hotel that granny would go and stay in. So that's kind of why I've gone for those. I have to say these boxes are empty because they've already gone upstairs. And I went to bought brass ones. They are called Arsted. Now one thing I do like to try and do when I go around IKEA is pick out the naughtiest thing. I forgot to see that this time because I was so busy shopping. Then, quite a boring thing, won't lie, got some new glasses these ones because the ones that have got a really mixed matchy which I sort of like but also have got really cloudy and stuff because somebody's put them in the dishwasher when they're not supposed to. So I've got these lovely they're um, ribbed for your pleasure. Really 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 like them. They are called Vardigan and there were six of them and I think these were like five pounds or something. I won't go through all the price of things that seems a little bit I think my grand, speaking of grand, would say gauche. And um, then I did not buy this jumper in Ikea, but I did get it in m &S afterwards. And I really like it. I think I actually might wear it tomorrow. It's a kind of bluey gray. Don't tell me that I'm starting to look gray. That would be not the best thing. But anyway, there's that. Oh, oh dear, that's gone on the floor. So in my bag of goodies, before we get to the inevitable, yes, there will be a plant section because you can't leave Ikea without going through the plants and I don't seem to be able to leave without plants, although no cacti at the moment. I know, I know, just bear a thought for me. Then I've got quite a few Christmas <laughs> decorations because they're in the sale. These have nothing to do with the library, neither do the glasses really to be honest, but we just need some more. But they were super cute and I think they're um, reindeer. They were like a pound each. I've got some of the little lovely bobby ones. I know that Christmas is gone and you shouldn't be using Christmas content, but there we go. They're the same polka dots. You can't go wrong with polka dots. But I thought how nice to be able to pop these on the tree. Christmas, I was going to say next Christmas, but of course it'll be this Christmas. Oh my goodness, I've said that far too early in the year. But it's still the sales, there we go. And then back on the subject of things that I got for the library. So I want to um, move the armchairs around. And, and I'll film all of this when I do it, because I'm hopefully going to do it shortly. I, yeah, I really want to move the armchairs around and I want to make sure though that they're still pink a lot, because what, the, the room's kind of a, I would say it's like a lilac-y colour, but it does come out as bluey purpley. What else I suppose it is lilac, isn't it? Anyway, the uh, accent tones have become pink because of the chairs that I've got in there, because when Maid was still running RIP, and that's where I would guess it. so. I got some, this was on sale, I think this one was like three quid, but um, it's a nice pink cover. Chris will want to iron that if I show that to him, but I just want to get that, we'll whack it on the chair. And then obviously with a pillow in it, which we'll come to shortly. Then the other one I got, and I thought this was quite a lot of fun, Ooh. is this one, which has got this sort of furry material in it. It feels quite cuddly, and um, that's, another form of coziness, isn't it? Goodly, uh oh, a bit of it's come out. There we go. And of course, in order to get, uh, and of course I had to buy pillows for pillowcakes. Okay, actually, while I'm chatting to you now, I will get them out so they can air. You just open them and within minutes, they're really, really lovely and ready to be used. So, that was that. Now, before we head off to do some sorting of the library, obviously I mentioned the plant section, so let's get to it. I've never seen these before in my life. There's something slightly arachnid about them, which makes me feel mildly uncomfortable. I mean, this is obscene, this one. I just like fell in love with them. I misread the label though. I thought they were 
four pounds each. They weren't, they were eight pounds each, which is excessive, but I think these will go on the mantelpiece. The only thing with Ikea, and if Ikea you are watching this, please bear this in mind, is their pots are really odd sizes, and then the pots they sell are one, quite boring, but two, really odd sizes that don't seem to work with the plants that they're selling. This seems to me a missed opportunity, frankly. Anyway, so I need to find some pots for those. As I do, a reduced Christmas tree that I got. Oh, I should say these are called Sansevieria or Fernwood. Literally never heard of them before in my life. And this is a, oh, it's hetero, oh dear. It's a heterophilia. <laughs> Heterophila, yeah. And I think this is some kind of a spruce, but it's clearly like gonna be a Christmas tree at some point, so I've got that, because it was five quid for using quite a lot. And then last but not least, I really want a bigger plant to go behind me in on the bookshelves when I film on my channel. And so, which you're watching now, so I don't know why I said that. Like, suddenly I'm in a forest. This is an Alacasia Amazonica. And I think this will look gorgeous on the sort of lower bookshelves next to the taller ones, where I'm planning on also putting a lamp so that I can sit there and read. Although that sofa that I film on is beautiful. It's a lovely pink thing. It's apparently a really comfy bed, not such a comfy sofa, but never mind. Oh, still, literally, behind the trees. That was a haul from Ikea. Let me know if you enjoyed that. I have got to go and get some plant pots tomorrow. I think I'm going to have to do a trick to a TK Maxx because that's a fabulous place to get plant pots so that um, I can get them in the room pronto because I'm also quite impatient. I like to, like, once I've got to just get it in the room, get it ready, get it sorted. Generally, I'll try and do everything all at once, which is why the office is stressing me out because we keep looking for curtain bowls for it, for the gorgeous new curtains I've got, and no sign of them. And I'm going into 2023 with it being an absolute mess and unfinished, imagine. Right, let's go upstairs and let's get cracking on that room. I don't think this is gonna live in there though. I feel like this needs to live. I don't know where you're gonna live. We'll find you somewhere, but probably not there. Anyway, blah, 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 bye. So this side of the library is pretty much fine. I just need to move things about a little bit. I've got plants that I want to go here and move them elsewhere, etc. So that's all sort of done. However, when we come to this side of the library, it's just a hodgepodge of mess. So that is what I'm going to be sorting out today. And I will put you on time lapse, I think, as I do it. Uh, not on this phone though, because I want to watch some, well, listen to some booktube while I get on with it. Or maybe some bops and pops. Pops and bops? Pops and pops. Pops and bops. Maybe those. <laughs> into my buttons. Excuse me. Their buttons are not Beatles or anything. Oi! Oi! Oscar! No! You naughty boy. Oh god, I might have to change. Literally just got up on that sink. Oh. Unless it's the black layers. Hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> we are just about to do a TK Maxx and and home sense shop now the reason that that's a joy is because home sense is the homey part of tk maxx but we also really like tk maxx and in a magical land called aintree you can get both oh i'm blinded by the sun today hi everyone and we are back from the magical land of aintree where they have a tk maxx and a home sense i mean sometimes life just spoils you with riches and as you can see i'm also still very much 
in the forest. I have now got plant pots for both of these because in TK Maxx I got this lovely one for $7.99, which is gonna be for Sprucey Lucy. Oh, hello. That I think is gorgeous. It's kind of almost got like a, I wanna say it's a bit like feathers or scales or something, but anyway, I like it a lot. Not sure where, Sprucey Lucy is gonna live, but we shall find out. However, I am sure that this beast from the Amazon, I mean, my joke about my ex-husband then, is going to be living in my library. And I got this, I've realized that I've left the pink base over there. Don't make a joke about pink bases. That's filthy. This is what the gorgeous Amazonica is going to live in and go and live upstairs in my library very soon. This was $12.99 and they actually have a smaller one which I nearly bought, although as I was moving it I chipped a load off it so I hid it. Um, please don't report me to anybody because that is shameful. I also randomly, because you never leave TK Maxx without something random, got some bath salts from Australia. I am a big Lush lover, although Lush can be a thrush lover and so I'm trying not to use bath bombs too often. Have I made this a little bit too saucy and a little bit too close to home? Possibly. Anyway, uh, these are orange and cedarwood essential oils with magnesium infused organic sea salt and they're from Melbourne and um, I do love everything Australian without having actually been there. So yeah, they are going to be going in the back with me at some point. Went into Sainsbury's you guessed it, more baubles, but these, I just feel like they're the dynasty of baubles. They're a good night out kind of bauble. Do you know what I mean? They've got that feel about them, but that's it. I'm not buying any more baubles. Went into another M&S and got some more sale items. So I got this in the sale yesterday in one M&S. Got some jeans, I'm just throwing it on the floor in the sale. I um, love a jean. I know they're sort of deemed a bit out of fashion and a bit middle-aged, but hey-ho. Then, I couldn't not get these. I mean, they are just, I don't know if you can see the pattern on them, but they are camp as camp, reduced to 12 pounds, possibly a bit too big for me, but I love me a pajama. And I'm also thinking, oh, hello. Um, I'm also thinking that, you can almost envisage me in them now, can't you? These will be perfect for a holiday, hopefully going on in Easter when we'll be staying with family and I want to pack light and these are lighter than my tracksuits, which frankly I'm amazed I've been out of for the last couple of days, but also uh, will be warm because it might be quite chilly where we are off to. So those, and then if that wasn't enough before all of that actually, we went not to sweet soy sauce, ABC, the Chinese supermarket. And I love me, I'm gonna to have to move all of this. I can't have a whole forest here, but I can. I can have some other forest here, maybe with a Christmas tree just behind it. Wild, it's nature. But I got myself quite a few treats. So I really love these sticks, which are peppero. And I got a few, I got peppero uh, almond, peppero crunchy, peppero peanut. And then I haven't tried these before. These are popo or topo oh i also got pepper seasons greeting with white cookie but i got that one and then oh, i got pepper chocolate filled they went absolutely wild they're a really nice afternoon treat not 11s is more threes is of an afternoon room really like i thought i got some more of these ones. i did here we go um and these are vanilla chocolate and vanilla strawberry so they're lovely i got myself some kinds of fruit juice just because they look really cute and tiny. Um, one of them, I can't remember what one of them is now, one of them's pear, the other one looks like orange. So they're cute, aren't they? Very cute. I like them. Should I put them there so you can just see them? Yeah, well. Um, and then also, I do really like these. I can't remember what they're called now, but I really, really, really enjoy them. And um, they had a strawberry one, which I don't normally like strawberry flavoured things, but I was in the mood for it. I nearly had it in the car. These crisps had a sweet corn with a face on it, so I thought they'd be fun. They had eel flavour, I didn't go for that, I went for smoked barbecue. I also got some sugar crackers, which apparently are the perfect, it says on the back, for dipping into tea. This is the um, Chinese supermarket that's underneath my favourite dim sum restaurant in Liverpool, it's just amazing. Um, and then, and ultimately, I got egg rolls, and I mainly got these because, I mean, how cute is that chick on the front? And then they're also on the individual packets. 
So I'm all about the cuteness. And last but not least, I got myself some rose green tea because I like anything rose flavoured. And I'm trying to wean myself off having too much like traditional tea with milk and sugar in the day and trying to head to more herbals. So that will be perfect for that. And that is everything. Uh, these are quite, un it's quite unusual for me to do as many hauls as this and have as, as spree as I've had, but it was the sales and it was just, yeah, New Year, treat myself, but it won't be this way all the time. But let me know if you enjoyed them and if you don't want to see them ever again, don't tell me. <laughs> if you're not a big fan, you can tell me. I can take it. I wish I had some papers to do because I feel like I've just done the news side at a desk like this. At least all my videos at a desk. Go mad. Hello. Hi everyone, it is about three o'clock on Monday. It's my last day off of the almost four weeks that I've had over Christmas, which yes, lucky me, but also I didn't get any holiday last year because I didn't think I was allowed any and then found out that I was at the end of my contract. So, and last year was a bonkers year. I always feel like I have to defend having a holiday because you get a lot of people saying, oh, you lucky, lucky thing. Oh, blimey, you don't know you're born. It's like, well, worked hard for it. Anyway, moving on, what have I been up to today? Please excuse the tumble dryer for I'm getting everything ready for work and everything. And actually, I think I'm probably gonna finish my vlog today after, well, I'll talk about what I'm hoping to do so shortly, but so far today, <laughs> It is almost two o'clock. I have filmed a video for my Savage Beta Readers tier for Patreon, which is where I try new things out. And this is all about my book trolley. And then I filmed a video, which may be the one you've seen before this, where I'm talking about how I'm using my book trolley this year and how I'm sort of trying to keep a tab of what comes onto my periphery and how it comes onto my periphery. There's another video that I, that I may make I was going to say my lunch break tomorrow, but my lunch break tomorrow I'm going to have to tidy the office quite a lot um, for I have not touched it. Although, have you noticed how nice the new library backdrop is? I love this plant. I love this lamp. I love the fact that I am actually going to probably get to read here more. And as you'll have seen from the video that I shared the other side, which has changed a little bit, actually, I'll show you it in a bit. Um, that's just like looking so lovely and so ready to sit and read. And that is what I'm planning on doing this afternoon. Because the other thing I was going to say is I started watching our flags oh my goodness what's the name of the show it's the pirate show it's really camp really funny and just tried like one or two episodes and then suddenly watched like half the series then i filmed had a little bit of a sort of sort out of just a few of the i was gonna say communal areas like i live in a shed house but you know what i mean the plan for the rest of the day is i really want to try and whittle down my shelves a lot more and also i discovered via instagram was it yesterday already today the days have gone a little bit ooh, the last couple of days it's really odd as well because i edited and uploaded the first reading vlog of the year yesterday i feel like i've not achieved any content since then but because i was recording this and that one at the same time it's just made my head go a bit more so than usual i saw that it is january in japan which i didn't know was happening i thought oh i'd like to join in with that and i thought oh which authors from japan do i have books of and i instantly thought of sayaka murata's earthlings which i remember i sent ages ago i'm so sorry granta because this was a like eight out of i think it was yeah 50 proofs they did they gave one to my mum she's read it already swap though she read it late too i was thinking oh i know this has like a really shocking ending it feels like a book that you should just sit and read in one go and i have the real urge to do that and also it'll help me clear my shelves because this was on my um trade paperback shelves over there not that you can see where i'm pointing then i realized this was on my shelves of so this is another proof edition of it with this cute hedgehog on the cover that this was on my shelves in the turquoise spare room and then i also <laughs> realized that i had this which is the finished and this glows in the dark which i think is brilliant also slightly much as this edition of it so if i read this i've managed to actually get three books off my shelves by only reading one book and that feels slightly clever. It also is concerning that I had three copies of it and I hadn't twigged that I had that many. I knew I had the proof on another, I'd, I'd forgotten about this one, but um, yeah. So I think, I'm not gonna read this one, <laughs> I think I'm going to read this one because that one um, is 
uh, unedited text, whereas I think this one had had a bit of a tweak possibly since, um, and then obviously the final one came out. But I'm intrigued for this, and if I can get it in there, I'll try and take a picture of it with my the inherit. I'll try and take a picture of it with the collection of hedgehogs that I inherited from my gran, uh, which I loved when I was little. I'm obsessed with these clean them all the time and everything and play with them. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I might do that. Although, if I can try and get this book as a photograph, oh, I can't even speak. I think I've suddenly really relaxed. That's a really long lie in, and I'm worried about like tomorrow, my alarm clock going off and being like, what, what goes on? I don't feel sorry for me because I only go in two days and then I'm off again for five. So anyway, if I can get a picture of this with the glow in the dark cover, that would be, I think, super duper cool for um, Instagram. So that's my plan. Like I said, it is three o'clock now. It's 200 and, 50 pages, which is probably about three or four hours reading for me. I think I might have a nice afternoon bath and I'll report back as it goes on. And I think tonight I'm either gonna watch The Pale Blue Eye, which I keep getting confused with The Bluest Eye, which obviously I read last week, or The Banshees of, I can't remember what it's called. They're kind of the top two, but this week I have, apart from when I go to, but oh, that's the other thing that's exciting about this week is I'm back to work, but actually Wednesday is our belated Christmas party because of the uh, train strikes. So off to do escape rooms and see the team, which would be a really, really lovely, nice second day back. So it's a really nice way back in, ease myself back into the year. Anyway, moving on from that, that is my plan this afternoon, get to this and I shall report back in due course. And then tonight is gonna to be a microwave meal for one and a movie. What a glamorous life I lead. I will uh, catch up with you when I've read some. Probably not in the bath though, saucy. Hi everyone, so I read the first two chapters of Earthlings in the Bath and this is about Natsuki who is a young girl who we first meet on a trip to go to see her cousin who she believes she is a magician and that she has a toy that talks to her that's from another planet and the planet, I need to get the name of the planet right, let me try and find it now. Oh dear, I've not prepared properly. Poppin Popopia is where um, this toy comes from and um, she's telling her cousin you and she thinks that he won't believe her but he does because he believes that he's actually an alien and is not part of the human race. We go with Natsuki after she's left and we meet this teacher who initially we think is kind but starts to show this really really creepy side and it gets really dark within the second chapter and it's almost how from that point Natsuki feels like maybe she isn't magical because she can't stop evil things happening but maybe she is an alien too because she's starting to feel well she's dehumanizing herself she feels like her mouth no longer works and that her body is not quite what it was meant to be she then goes back to um see her cousin new and they've decided they're going to get married and they're going to be aliens together but now Natsuki is going to have to go back to school and I'm kind of dreading what's going to come, I won't lie, because it's been quite hard to read in parts already, but there's definitely a propulsion to it and I feel like something like, I know I've been told like the ending is like jaw-dropping because that was what the pitch was kind of of the book, but I do feel like this is going to go quite bonkers, so I'm going to now settle down. It's only, I don't want to give myself any spoilers, but it's only about six chapters, I think. So therefore, I think I can get this done before I uh, have my tea and watch a film. I will say you can read it really quick. <laughs> Just Chris having a way in the background, sorry everyone. I will say you can read this really, really quickly. And so now I'm going to do that before having my tea and watching a film and I'll report back when I've finished. I don't know how I'm going to do this without like giving everything away and responding to that. Anyway, there we go. That's that. I have finished this. I don't really know what I can say about the ending. It does go bonkers. I don't know whether I think it's genius. I don't know whether I think it's just 
I can't decide whether it was pulled off brilliantly or not really pulled off right or what's going on. Um, yeah, so that's where we are with that. I'll try and put into words without spoilers more about it when it comes to my wrap up at the end of the month. Um, Cause also I've got to leave something for wrap ups, haven't I? Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go and watch a Victorian crime novel. No, film. A Victoria. I'm going to go and watch a film about a Victorian crime. I don't know if it's true or not, because it has got um, Edgar Allan Poe in it. Anyway, um, not literally, obviously, somebody playing him. Uh, it's also, I found out, watching Anderson in, which always makes me very excited, because I think she's brilliant. But I shall sign off for now, maybe leave you with a snippet of something from the film, and see you very soon. If you got this far, I would love you to leave me a hedgehog emoji in the comments and give me any thoughts on anything that you wanna have a chat about in this video below. And I will see you soon. Mind blown. I don't follow your drift. Oh, no, I'm sure you don't. And I drift clear to the other side of the Hudson and no one would care. No one would follow. Wouldn't they, Daniel? Some. <laughs> Hi everyone, it is editing Simon after that glorious performance from Gillian Anderson that you've just seen. Honestly, she steals every scene in The Pale Blue Eye, which was good. It wasn't like amazing, but I love the fact they had literary links because of Edgar Allan Poe and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, the observant of you will have spotted that I never mentioned <laughs> these books again and which one won the vote for my patrons and which one I was going to read next. The one that won the vote was Nightcrawling by Leela Motley. I didn't end up reading it because you'll have seen doing the library and getting it all lovely like this took up a lot of time and so I am going to though on Patreon get my patrons to pick a different book from a selection of four with covers that match all of the colours of the rainbow and I will do a special vlog of those books in the forthcoming weeks and months. I thought it might be something quite fun to do. And um, yeah, so if you're a Patreon, don't feel like slighted that I didn't get to this. Sometimes I just forget things and I did literally forget about it because I was so busy sorting the library out. So there we go. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Um, I would love to hear in the comments below your thoughts on what you love to see in vlogs, any particular channels that do vlogs that you really really love and also any travel vlogs that you love for I am going to be a traveling a few times in the forthcoming months ahead and I would like to do some sort of travel vlogs obviously with bookish content in because it's me it's books and also it's me there'll be food but I just wondered what else or any that you particularly liked and stuff just because I really love watching vlogs and I want to keep getting mine better and better. I really enjoy editing them and having them as memories for me, which is why they won't necessarily go anywhere, although some people might not write vlogs and wish they would. But anyway, I'd love to know all of that down below. And as I mentioned before, if you want to leave a emoji of a hedgehog, that would be lovely. I'm now hoping that they actually have emojis of hedgehogs. But yeah, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on vlogs, anything you really, really like seeing in them. Because I know this one was quite hauly as well, which I don't tend to normally do, and it was more chatty than usual, which is something that I want to do more of. All your thoughts and channels and vlogs that you really, really enjoy, be they reading vlogs or travel job, travel job, travel job, be they reading vlogs or travel vlogs, I would love that too. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye.